While AMD has been crushing the desktop CPU market when it comes to the mobile CPUs, well, let's say they haven't really been relevant for a very long time. Now, that's partially due to the CPUs being one step behind Intel CPUs and partially due to manufacturers not really making anything interesting using those CPUs. Now, they did make an interesting laptop a few months back, the MSI Alpha 15 that I actually reviewed. But even though that was a very decent entry-level gaming laptop, the 3000 series 4-core CPU was just holding it back. But that is going to change today because AMD is finally releasing their sexy Zen 2 cores to the mobile market as well with their Ryzen 4000 series mobile CPUs. Now, they're not going to be limited by 4 cores, but they're coming as a 6 core and 8 core versions. And the first laptop with that Ryzen 4000 series CPU that I got in the office is this one. This is the MSI Bravo 17. Now, it is the successor of the Alpha 15 and uh, it has the same GPU. So this is the RX 5500M, but this time it comes with the Ryzen 7 4800H CPU. It will be available as a 15 inch version and a 17 inch version like I have right here. And depending on your specs, it will cost you between $1,000 and $1,300. So that's still a pretty decent price for an entry level gaming laptop. Now, let's see how this uh, laptop performs. Let's see how the new CPUs are and if it's worth considering at all. Let's go. This video is brought to you by Cooler Master and their MM711 Ultra Light Gaming Mouse. With the top optical sensor, solid Omron switches, beautiful RGB and a weight of only 60 grams, the MM711 is a great mouse for serious gamers and all-around users alike. Check it out using the links in the description below. Considering it's an affordable gaming laptop, it is good to see they're still using a nice amount of metal on top and on the inside. The 17-inch version weighs around 2.2 kilos, which isn't that much for a 17-inch laptop, and the 15 inch will weigh just under two kilos. The underside is plastic, but it is still a pretty sturdy laptop overall. Unfortunately, the brushed metal on the top and on the inside is extremely sensitive to fingerprints, so be prepared to clean it often. And don't worry about wiping the logo off like I did on the Alpha 15, because this one isn't going anywhere. Connectivity is good considering the price. There is a power connection, HDMI and two USB 3 type A ports on the left side. There is an Ethernet, another type A port and a type C connection and audio jacks on the right side. There is no Thunderbolt, but overall I think this is plenty for most users out there. If we open the laptop, we can see that MSI is now doing the same as we've seen on Asus laptops, with a panel mechanism lifting the bottom of the laptop up for a bit of extra airflow. The hinges themselves feel solid, but there is a bit of flex in the panel. Now there is nothing to worry about in normal use, just don't try and twist it for no good reason. As we've seen on most MSI laptops recently, their keyboard is actually very pleasant to work on. The keys are very stable and there is decent travel. There is a bit of flex if you press the back of the chassis, but not that much when you press the actual keys, so it doesn't really feel like you're working on a cheaper laptop. The touchpad is a precision model and it's all right, I wish it was a bit larger like we've seen on the Prestige models. And it's not really the sharpest of them all, but it's good enough, I guess. The gamers will use an extra mouse anyways. Opening the laptop is easy enough as well. Now, oddly enough, the fans inside don't really line up with the vents on the cover. But I'll talk about performance in a bit. It's easy enough to clean out the fans, replace the battery, memory and storage. And it's also nice to see a Wi-Fi 6 chip on a budget machine, so you won't realistically have to replace that. Now this is the most full spec model MSI specs to launch, meaning that there is 16 gigabytes of dual channel memory, 256 gigabyte NVMe SSD and a one terabyte mechanical hard drive. Now the cheaper options will likely have a smaller SSD and less memory, but I don't know if that means that you will only get one single 8GB module. If that turns out to be the case, expect performance to suffer a bit. And if you want to play it safe, I would just go for a 16GB option like we have right here. If you can save a bit on the storage, that might not be a bad idea because as you can see, it is actually very easy to just add some more SSD space yourself. So let's get to the part that all of you have been waiting for for a very long time, the CPU performance. And AMD did not disappoint. This Ryzen 4800H mobile CPU absolutely crushes all Intel mainstream mobile CPUs from the last two years. 
It is really only outdone in these graphs by the i9-9980HK in the ROG mothership or the desktop Intel Core i9-9900K in the MSI Titan. And those are both very expensive laptops with extreme cooling solution pushing those CPUs to the 5 gigahertz mark. Even if I put it in a graph with desktop CPUs, it just holds up really well, outperforming a desktop Ryzen 7 2700X, for example. And if you want an affordable laptop for CPU heavy tasks, this shows a lot of potential. Now, considering the fact that this is one of the cheapest laptops in my list, seeing it offers one of the best CPU performance results is just fantastic. Of course, this is an 8-core CPU, while most of the Intel CPUs in this list have either 4 or 6 cores. I cannot really show you the performance of the new Intel CPUs launching in a couple of days, but let's say Intel will have to do something very special to make AMD's results here anything less than very, very competitive, especially at this price point. When it comes to gaming, since MSI is sticking to the same RX 5500M GPU that we've seen in the Alpha 15, it's those results I mostly want to compare it to, and that way we can see the difference that the new CPU makes. Now, depending on the game you're playing and the settings, we see sometimes up to around 50% improved frame rates. AAA titles like Division, Far Cry and Assassin's Creed are notoriously CPU heavy and show much better results now. Where Odyssey struggled on the Alpha, even on medium, at around 40 FPS, suddenly it's playing super smooth at 69 FPS average. And it will, of course, have no problem keeping uh, 120 FPS or more on lighter games like CSGO or League of Legends in case you were worried about those games. As you would expect from any affordable or basically any gaming laptop out there, it does get quite loud if you play games in performance mode. Now, MSI is choosing performance over noise, letting the CPU run up to 90 degrees to maintain that nice 4 GHz stable in CPU stress test, or 3.6 GHz if you stress the CPU and GPU at the same time, and there the GPU will hit around 80 degrees Celsius well, well within spec. Gamers will definitely want a headset for gaming, considering the noise during CPU and GPU combined stress tests, but thankfully it does remain nice and quiet under lighter loads. And considering the speakers are actually quite nice, for a laptop that is, they offer plenty of volume, so you shouldn't worry about noise if you want to watch a movie or a series on your laptop every once in a while. Now, of course, the battery life also isn't that amazing either, even if you're just watching something. Now, the Bravo does allow you to switch between the dedicated RX 5500M GPU and the built-in Vega graphics on the CPU. But even in the super saver mode, using the CPU graphics, you will only reach about three hours of watching Netflix or similar light use. Now that is good enough for a gaming laptop at home, just don't really use it as a laptop to take to school or to work. Oh, and if you're gaming, you'll basically want to plug it in both for performance and running out of battery within an hour. So one thing I haven't talked about is the display, and while Alpha laptops had a Full HD 144Hz panels, the Bravo actually has a Full HD 120Hz panel. Speed-wise, I don't think you'll see the difference unless you really run both side by side, but one major difference is that the Alpha 15 showed some pretty good all-around results when it comes to colors as well, where the panel of the Bravo sample isn't really doing so well. Now, the color gamut is pretty poor at only 60% sRGB, which explains the large delta values in color accuracy as well. Also, the maximum brightness is low at 240 nits. Now, that's enough for indoor gaming, but not really great outside or in a very light room. Now, MSI told me this is a pre-evaluation unit and the display is not final yet. And considering the most retail MSI laptops I've seen so far, they all had great panels, so that does sound likely, but it still is something I want to point out right now and something I will want to confirm. So, as soon as I test the final units, I will add the results of those to the description down below. So I'm gonna split this conclusion in two and talk about first the uh, CPU and then about the whole laptop. And when it comes to these new mobile CPUs, I would say they did to the mobile market the same thing they did to the desktop market. And that is, after years of Intel dominating, they came in and they crushed it. So this Ryzen 7 4800H offers a ton of performance, both single and multi-core, and it shows that it can be cooled sufficiently by even a budget 
chassis. Now it's really hard to compare the prices because you cannot really purchase the CPU separately, but it's quite obvious that AMD is offering these CPUs for a much lower price to vendors than the uh, eight core Intel CPUs because Right now in the Netherlands, if you want to buy an 8-core Intel laptop, it will cost you 2200 euros, while this Bravo 17 that also has 8 cores will cost you half as much. And that's great news for anyone looking to buy a nice gaming laptop or a nice powerful workstation. Now, I can't really talk about the performance of the new Intel CPUs that are coming in a few days, but I would say this performance at this price point is something truly special. As for the MSI and the Bravo 17, well, this laptop is a great example of why we should be so excited about these new mobile processors. Now, first, it is very important to remember that Bravo is still an affordable gaming laptop with mediocre battery life, a fair bit of noise while gaming, and it doesn't really have the most jaw-dropping design. It's also lacking some fancy stuff like Thunderbolt connections, etc. But its main weakness is gone. It is no longer held back by a weak CPU. And the RX 5500 M GPU can finally show its full potential and it's performing really well both in light games and AAA titles. And if you do anything CPU heavy, the performance will be unmatched considering the price of this laptop. And overall, the build quality is quite nice. The keyboard is actually very good to work on. It is easy to open, to upgrade, to maintain. I just really, really hope that they will improve the display like they promised because that will make it an ideal budget gaming laptop to go for. Now, I'm not sure when it will be available, but as soon as I find out, I will upgrade the, and update the description down below. So uh, as soon as I know, you guys will know. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments down below what do you think about this new laptop and about the new mobile AMD CPU. Don't forget to subscribe, give me a thumbs up and see you in the next one. Bye!